I do not have any explanation for that, but looks like it's kinda alive. Alright, so a while back I did something super ridiculous. I took an old EPC, sealed the CPU with epoxy resin, then built a tiny reservoir for the water, and then, yep, we poured some water directly on the top of the PCB. Why? Well, to try to cool it directly with water on the silicon. As you can see, the laptop is working, and the water is slowly heating up. The maximum water temperature was 35 degrees, which is not very impressive. So today we are turning things up. This is a huge chunkus of an old laptop. It has an i5, which heats up to 105 degrees. So now we will have to disassemble it and do the same thing as with this EPC. Will it survive? Will it cool like a beast or will it fry itself? Well, let's just say that things are about to get very wet and possibly very smoky. Let's get started. In case of this EPC, we have Southbridge, Northbridge and Acceleron CPU. They don't hit much, but this proved that the experiment can work. Now you can see that everything is covered with epoxy and only the silicon is exposed. So that will be first step we need to do with this motherboard. Here I 3D printed a frame. Now before we install the frame, I will also isolate the CPU, because if the epoxy gets into these holes, maybe the contact will be bad and the whole experiment will not work. So I think the best will be if we add some glue to the edges of the socket and this CPU. Of course it will be non-removable after that, but it's an old laptop, so I guess it's fine. Also let's add a second layer. I will also add some tape so we can press and all the glue will fill in all the holes. I guess that should be fine and now we wait till it dries up. Looks like everything is sealed and we can remove the tape to check if it's sealed well. So the next step is attach this frame. And now we carefully place it on top. Of course some glue will come out on the sides, but here the main idea is for it to become sealed. So we'll leave this one like that to dry and we'll check it tomorrow. Two days later I hope the glue is dry and we can now test if we have any leaks with alcohol. It is pretty straightforward, I will just pour the alcohol on top. Hopefully we will not get any leaks around this 3D printed housing. Looks pretty weird and pretty cool. And the good thing is that looks like we don't have any leaks. So we can proceed with next step and pour some epoxy resin on top. And before that we can collect the alcohol with a syringe. Now all the alcohol is dry and we can proceed with pouring the epoxy on top. With this looks like the epoxy is ready to be poured and to control the flow we will use a syringe again. This is how it looks when we have some epoxy added, only the silicon is exposed and everything else is covered with epoxy to isolate it. In this case the silicon got covered a bit more, but I guess we will be able to remove the epoxy when it's dry. Now let's wait 24 hours and check back when it's dry. Some hours passed and this is how our epoxy resin looks. And we have two problems. The first one will be that the silicon of the GPU is covered with epoxy as well. And in the case of the CPU, some epoxy escaped, so some chips are not covered fully. Now what we need to do is to remove some epoxy from here, and then add more epoxy here. Yeah, removing epoxy from here is a tough one, but let's try it carefully. The operation was kinda successful. I say kinda because as you can see, one piece of the silicon was cracked. And that's why let's connect the screen and see if it still works. What got a bit damaged is the GPU, so maybe it will beep telling me the GPU is damaged. Cool, this seemed to work and that means that the experiment continues. Maybe we will get an error in the future when we install some graphic card drivers. And to find that out we need to continue. So now we wait again till it dries up and then we add some epoxy here. And finally, once the epoxy is dry, we arrive to the final step. Which is to attach these walls. They are already cut and we only need to stick them well. And make sure no water escapes. Oh well, so basically it was not cut very precisely and somewhere we have these small gaps. Some of them are sealed with glue, but I guess I will install a 3D printed corner so that no liquid escapes from the corners. For now let's wait and then the glue dries up, we will install the corners. 
And finally with these angles we seamed all the holes in this aquarium. Now we need to pour some water and see if it's sealed well. And let's see now if we have any gaps on our aquarium. Oh. Yep, and indeed the water is escaping from here. And also from here and from somewhere here. Well, let's seal all these gaps now. Do we have any leaks? Looks like finally we're not having any leaks. Oh well, and we have a leak right here. Looks like another one is right here. And a third one right here. A good thing is that water is not escaping fast, meaning that the hole is tiny. And the bad thing is that we have these leaks and I have to see them before we try the experiment. Finally, looks like the tank has zero leaks now. It was standing like that for the last 48 hours and as we can see we have zero leaks. Basically to make everything sealed I was pressing super hard with my finger and like that all the glue got in the small cracks. Also I did the same outside. Looks pretty weird of course, but since it works we can continue with the experiment. And that means that we can connect all the components and try to use this PC as a normal PC. And the screen will go here because it says LCD. Now from this side everything is connected. From the other side we connect the fan. The Wi-Fi antennas will not reach, so let's use a separate ones. Then we connect the power button. And last but not least will be the SSD with Windows 10. Cool, so now we can turn it on and hope it works. And before we do that, shall we? Let's install the thermometer to see the temperature. And finally, let's connect the power. I really hope it will work, because a lot of time was spent. And if it doesn't, I would have to find another one and do the same again. Well, I will leave it like that for now. And now we press the button and let's hope it works. Alright, we had the first blue screen. Let's plug in the keyboard. <laughs> oh well, looks like we need to reinstall the Windows. While I create the USB with Windows, let's disconnect the disk and see if everything works well. This is a very good sign that it works fine. Let's hope that the problem is the Windows installation and not the graphics card which I damaged before. Let's check everything with thermal camera as well. And we can see that some MOSFETs and other chips are 40 degrees Celsius. And then inside our tank we have like 24 degrees. On this side some chips are at 43 degrees. Also we can see the CPU inside the tank is a bit yellow because it's hot. But the water on top keeps it quite cool. 10 minutes later we have the USB ready and the temperature now is 30 degrees. So when we have the bias on the screen actually the CPU is pretty hot. Looks like it is at 34 degrees more or less. Well, let's install the windows. Oh no, looks like it's frozen. This is not very good. But let's shut it down and enter the BIOS again. And now we have nothing on the screen. Wait, let's disconnect the fan because looks like it doesn't work. We try again. Yep, and looks like something is not right. Let's try another RAM. We turn it on again. Damn. This is a very good sign. I thought we lost this motherboard with the contraption. Let's enter the BIOS. How long do I have to wait? Nice, we can see the BIOS again. So the laptop is working and let's try to install the Windows. We connect the disk and the bootable USB. Wait, 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 wait. Like that you will see the screen better. And now we turn it on. Let's try another SSD. We turn it on again. Now we try another power supply. Yeah, looks like something is not right. Let's try to boot in the Windows again. Let's try the BIOS again. We can leave it like that to see when will it freeze. Cool, and the bra is still going. It is getting hotter and hotter, by the way. Let's try Linux. Damn. This SSD has another installation of Windows. Yep, literally at boot it will shut down for some reason. So I was investigating more and the problem is that I've changed the CPU from i3 to i5. And looks like that is why the motherboard cannot handle the power for the i5 CPU. Some of these capacitors can be changed and then it will be able to handle the power. But let's not modify the motherboard and try something else. 
That something else is Tiny Core Linux, because it runs directly from the RAM. We can disconnect the SSD, this USB already has the Tiny Core, and we can power it on. Basically, this is a very basic operating system, and since it is super tiny, it can run directly from your RAM. Also, technically, if you have 32GB of RAM or more, you can install Windows directly into your RAM as well. But that should be a topic for another video, and here, as you can see, we have a desktop, so we can experiment with this laptop more. Which is a very good thing, because I thought that I have to redo everything from scratch. We can connect to the Wi-Fi. It is very basic, and it will not tell you if it's connected or not. Then we can install a web browser. It is done a bit differently than to what we're used to, but you will see now that it's a normal web browser. Bruh. Well, as we can see, the same is happening, because it stresses the CPU too much. No problem with that. We can still stress the CPU and see which temperature will it reach without stressing it too much that it shuts down. I am pretty sure about that, because I can see the power consumption here, and when it reaches 2.4 amps, it will shut down. So basically I will run this command, and as we can see, now the power consumption is 1.67 amps, or 1.7. To stress it more, we can actually repeat the command in a separate window, because like that it will run on another core. Well, it looks like it will reach the maximum power consumption and shut down as well. So we can run the command and see which temperature will the water reach by running the command only on one core. And now look at this. If you pay closer attention to the CPU die, it is kinda moving. I do not have any explanation for that, but looks like it's kinda alive. If you are a CPU expert, let us know in the comments why that is happening. Well, this can be some water waves, because in theory the silicon is quite hard, and we can also see them on the GPU. Also, for some reason, the water became quite muddy. No idea why, but let's leave it like that, and see what temperature will it reach. One more thing we can do is check it with thermal camera. If I touch it with my finger, I get electrocuted, which is not good. And with thermal camera, we can see these cool streams of water. This also looks pretty cool to me. The laptop is frozen now, and the maximum temperature we were able to reach is 45 degrees Celsius. Well, and with this, we can call this experiment 50% successful. We were able to water cool the CPU die directly. Of course, we had some problems because this experiment is very weird and nobody will do that. And the idea now will be to find another laptop, maybe with an i7, and do the same contraption and see how cool it will get. And the next part can be that we cool down an Intel Xeon or even a Ryzen Threadripper, which can dissipate around 400 watts of heat. Anyways, thank you for watching, let me know in the comments what did we see on the top of the CPU, and also let me know what I can do so we can run Windows successfully on this map. See ya!